Hey everyone, Juan Valdez here, and I know it's been a while since I last uploaded a video here on YouTube, but I wanted to make this quick video going over some quick updates with you guys on what I've been working on, why I haven't been uploading as much, and um, also share some pretty cool things with you guys. So um, we'll get right into the video. Uh, the first thing I wanted to say is thank you guys so much for helping grow the channel to 12,000 subscribers. Um, I, I know that ever since I first started recording videos and you know, sharing content with you guys. You guys uh, showed me a lot of love and support, and so I truly appreciate that. Um, I am working, I am gonna work on being a little bit more consistent and like finding like a set schedule that I can kind of stick with uh, moving forward. It's just that the last few months has things have been really, really crazy, and I'm sure for a lot of you guys, it has been crazy too. Um, but I am gonna work on, again, uh, figuring out some kind of schedule that works best to, you know, be able to provide more content for you guys and you know, really share like some of the things that's working, some of the things that I'm working on, um, and etc. cetera. So um, yeah, we'll just get right, right into it. Honestly, it's been a hell of a year. Um, 2020, it's been a, a very interesting year. I know it's been tough for some, really good for others, but uh, you know, all we can really do is uh, count this as a year in the books and uh, you know, keep moving forward. So. Um, yeah, I wanted to just get right into the meat and potatoes and kind of share with you guys what's been all the good and the bad that, uh, you know, has happened since I last uploaded. And, um, you know, again, just, uh, you know, kind of share some things that I think you guys might get value from as well. So one of the first things actually is, is that when I last posted a video, um, I was actually talking about uh, a brand that we were currently working on. And at that time, it was actually just in the early phases, right? There wasn't really much of a concept. Um, we had just gotten samples of the product and um, we hadn't really seen or gotten any feedback from the market just yet. And what I wanted to do is actually just share the brand with you guys. So the name of the brand is actually a Silkwear. The brand uh, tagline is sleepwear you've been dreaming about. And um, the brand is all around uh, selling silk clothing, silk accessories, so like, for example, this is a box, you open it up, it has like another tagline, name of our website. And um, this in particular box has these silk scrunchies, or this is like a silk headband, a silk scrunchie, and a silk pillowcase. Um, and so basically the, the idea of this brand was to focus on selling, you know, silk accessories, everything from um, uh, silk robes to sleep in, um, silk headbands, um, silk scrunchies, um, silk pillowcases, uh, uh, maybe even uh, bed sets. That was the idea and the vision behind this brand. And, um, you know, we got the idea from just doing research like how we usually do online. And, um, you know, we basically followed through. We basically took all the exact same steps that we always take when, you know, we want to test out a brand or a product. And, um, you know, I wanted to share that this brand actually didn't actually end up working out as we expected. Um, we actually didn't get that good of a response from the market and uh, we didn't really get much good response in general on the product, on our ads. And so um, I think that, that there was a lot, of, a lot of things that we learned from this in particular project, but I just wanted to kind of summarize it and let you guys know that not every, proje not every product or project will be a winner, right? You win some and you lose some. We've had many different products, stores, and brands that have done well and some that haven't. And so this in particular one is one that we didn't really get that good of a response from. And so I wanted to also show you guys the, um, when I say response, I wanted to show you guys like um, inside of our Facebook ads account to kind of show you guys what I mean when I'm referring to getting a response and you know what we look for when we're actually testing products. So here we are inside of our uh, Facebook ad account. You can see right here, Silkware. And this is actually the entire ad account right here. I know it says lifetime on the dates, but really we tested this product uh, for like a month or two. It was back in um, December, end of December into January. So let me just put those dates. Uh, it was from uh, December. I think around even 24th, it was from, we'll just put from December to uh, January, just two months, even though it, it was a shorter time period. Actually, I'll show you guys this account overview right here. If you look at this account overview, you can see that um, basically we, we started running ads on 27th and then we ran ads until 
January 31st, right? I don't know what happened right here. Maybe like ad account got disabled or uh, I'm not exactly why we weren't, I'm not hundred percent sure why we were not running ads around this time period, but um, yeah, this is uh, the time period. So we tested the product out for roughly a month. And um, if I go back into the ad account to kind of show you guys, you can see right here, we spent uh, $1,200 and we generated a whopping 0 0.16 uh, ROAS. So I'm pretty sure we got a few different purchases. Let me actually uh, pull up the exact purchase value to uh, show you guys. Just go to purchase. Um, see what we generated actually from that 1200. So spent $1,200 generated a whopping $193, right? So again, not the best uh, experience and um, you know, not really the best, not really the best outcome, right? Now I wanted to also show you guys is that, uh, I want to also show you guys that we did go really deep onto, you know, actually testing out this brand, right? If we go into uh, everything from the ad sets, we tested out many different audiences. And then if we go into here, I can even show you guys the ads that we were running. We actually went in, we, you know, we ordered the product. Um, we ordered our own custom samples. We shot our own video ads, edited the videos, etc. And uh, I even show you guys like this is all a custom video right here. Um, you can see that we have our own ads that were made here. This is all of our own products. All of our own, these are all our own ads. We've got these all custom made. Now, of course, these uh, ads right here, they, they could have used some work, right? There's always room for improvement, but um, usually what we like to do is we like to test with a minimal viable product, right? And so with this product, with these ads, with the store that we had in place, it was all minimal viable, right? We spent maybe, you know, uh, two months total time working on everything from product, supplier, stores, ads, um, and everything else like in between, right? So that's, that's perfectly enough time to at least be able to have a minimal viable product where you can at least see what kind of response you get from the market. So our intentions with, with testing out this product was to really see what kind of response we get from the market, right? Usually what we do, part of our strategy that we go over in the e-com incubator um, is basically ordering a product that's already branded, already has either the custom packaging or our logo on the actual product. And um, what we do is we then um, get all of our own content, all, all of our own ads, edit our videos, etc. cetera. And um, you know, we then launch ads and we see, okay, well, what kind of response we get? If we end up getting any purchases, what we do is we simply refund all of the customers because of course we don't have any inventory. So we basically, uh, after we let ads run for like a week or two, we basically pull back and retract, turn all ads off, refund all customers if there's any, and um, you know, basically decide what to do from there, right? In this case, after we pulled back, like we didn't really get that, that good of a response. And so what we did is we just decided to uh, scrap this project um, and basically, you know, like just, you know, pretty much just scrap it. Like we still have the samples and stuff like that. The good thing is, is that we didn't place any like large bulk orders. And so uh, we weren't, you know, we didn't have to spend too much time worrying about how, what we're gonna do with the rest of the inventory. So. In total, this project we probably invested anywhere from two to four thousand dollars, roughly. I know we spent again twelve hundred on ads, samples was a few hundred. We also, um, you know, we booked an Airbnb for a photo shoot. We paid for models, um, the website, um, and other things in between. Maybe less, but I would say anywhere from two to three thousand dollars is a lot more accurate of uh, what was the total spend on these ads. We also ran some Google ads, so I, I didn't want to pull that up because we didn't really get any results from Google ads with this product. And so um, I wanted to really show you guys Facebook. So again, uh, the reason I wanted to share with you guys is that I wanted to, uh, you know, show you guys that not every single project, not every single product you find is going to be a winner. Right. And so it happens to the best of us, right? This isn't the first time we've had this kind of experience. However, the reason why I wanted to point that out is because, um, in this game, what wins is really persistent persistence, right? Right after we launched this, uh, this product and whatever, fast forward, everything, you know, we didn't get the response we were looking for. We immediately went on to the next product right after, right? So what I wanted to show you guys is that 
we went through the same process with another product. So here we are inside of another ad account for another product. We went through the exact same process of, you know, um, finding the product, ordering samples, getting it branded, uh, and then getting our own custom content. Actually, funny thing is, is that for this product, we did not get our own custom content. We actually used stock photos from online and uh, put those on our website and use that for our website, use stock photos for our website and then also use stock photos for our ads. And so um, the reason why I wanted to share that with you guys because I wanted to show you guys the results that we got from simply testing stock photos for again, content on our website and on our ads as well. So here we have these uh, seven campaigns that we ran and we tested. Um, you can see that for these seven campaigns, we spent a thousand dollars, right? And then this time, we generated four purchases and it was a total of a whopping 37, 0.37 return on ad spend, right? You may think, okay, well, that's a little bit better, but it's also not great. Well, the one thing to keep in mind is, or to look at in here is that in here, when we look at lifetime or no, when we look at a uh, right here, just for this week, because this was right after. So this was February one to the 16th, right? If we look at in here, if we look at the purchases and the ad sets that actually uh, got purchases. You can see right here that we're already getting a lot stronger of a ROAS than we did in the previous, with the previous product, right? With the previous ads that we were running. If we look inside of here, uh, if we go inside the ad sets, almost there are, I don't think there is a single ad set that has that kind of ROAS. If we go inside of here, you can see that this one was one pot, one, uh, 1.58. Um, let's see, let me just filter out by this. Okay, yeah, so 1.58, 1.94, and 2.51, right? Um, but if you look inside, and this is this is the kind of ROAS that we're getting with our own custom content, right? Our own videos, and obviously the product, etc. right? Now, if you look at this in particular, if we look at these results, these are results that we're getting, again, using uh, content that's not made from our own, right? Not, that doesn't make sense. These are results that we're getting from Again, using stock photos and uh, you know, uh, you know, stock images for our ads as well. And so, what that goes to show is, is that well, here we have a product that we're able to get, we're able to get purchases in a pretty good response without even putting much effort into uh, the product and developing the ads, the brand, the store, everything. So, ideally, when we're first in the testing phase. These are the type of things that we're, lo we're looking for. We're looking for things like, okay, well, what kind of cost per clicks are we getting? What kind of click-through rates? Are we getting purchases? So we like to look at the data and see like, okay, well, what kind of response are we getting in general with our ads uh, for this product? And that usually leads us to us determining, you know, whether we should continue to move forward to develop that product and that brand or not. So in this in particular case, you can see that, um, you know, you can see the response that we got. And so the next thing that I wanted to share with you guys is, is that um, we actually did decide to move forward with this in particular product and, and actually develop this in particular brand. And I wanna show you guys where we are up to date, right? When, when What it actually looks like when you actually find a product that you can develop and actually turn into a micro brand. So if we go to here, lifetime, you can see that, uh, and again, this is just Facebook, but you can see that we have spent a total of $215,000 on ads and we have generated, uh, let me actually just pull this up here. So again, this is live inside of my ad account. This is the exact same ad account again that we initially tested with and we experimented with. So um, again, the total spend was 215,000 and so far we have generated uh, $508,000 and it's a total of 2.36 ROAS. Now, this is only one of the channels that we use to advertise. We also run Google ads, email marketing, Pinterest ads. You know, we're diversifying our channels of traffic. One of the things that we focus on here in the e-com incubator is learning how to use different marketing channels to be able to reach our potential customers across whatever channel it is that they spend time on. So, um, just uh, that's just on a side note. I just wanted to show you guys again what it looks like, right? What the possibilities are, right? If we would have kept 
trying to bang our head against the wall for this other product, other brand, we would have never been able to take this product and develop it into what it is now and get these kind of results. In fact, um, Facebook isn't recording all the numbers that we have. We're actually about to cross the million dollar mark with this brand um, just this year, right? So this month is maybe seven, eight months old and we're about to cross a million dollars of revenue generated. Of course, that's not all profit, um, profit margins vary from anywhere from 22 to 23 percent. Uh, we've had to have a mixture of working with uh, US-based suppliers and then also working with overseas suppliers now, uh, which is what allows us to kind of have different margins. But um, overall, it's not bad for seven, eight months, right? Um, and so um, I wanted to update you guys on that. Um, I'm gonna be spending more time going over some more specifics in regards to the brand. Uh, the, and, and some of the things that are working for us, what's not working for us, and uh, share all that good stuff with you guys, right? I just wanted to make this video to give you guys some, you know, some quick updates on how things have been going. Honestly, it's been a grind um, building this, this brand from the ground up. Me and the team have been just working nonstop. Uh, we actually got started right before the, you know, this quarantine happened and, and you know, things were shut down and we've been experiencing month to month growth nonstop and so, um, you know, once we got going, you know, we, it's been a full-time grind. Like we've been just putting our heads down and just completely working uh, day in and day out to really build, um, especially now we're right around the corner from quarter four. And as you guys know, this year is expected to be the biggest, the biggest uh, holiday season ever when it comes to e-commerce and online shopping. So right now we're actually getting ready for that, making sure that we have enough inventory to keep up with the demand, making sure that we have all of our, uh, you know, marketing strategies in place, all of our campaigns um, prepared and making sure support can keep up, our customer support can keep up with customer inquiries, making sure the website's up to, up to date, like all these different things that we're working on right now. And, um, it's tough. It's tough to uh, kind of you know carve out time to to work on other things or other projects. But one of the things that I do want to do for you guys is you know just share more of the journey with you guys. Um, we literally started this brand right out of our um, me and my business partners. We started right of our right out of our apartment. Um, I was actually living in Boston for some time. So actually, that's probably this is probably a good time to update you guys. And the second thing that I wanted to update you guys on is. Um, basically moving, um, a lot of you guys know, I spent the last four years living in California. I kind of lived all over, um, uh, San Francisco first and San Diego, Orange County. And the last two years I lived in Los Angeles. Um, I loved California, great place. Um, but I was a little bit far from family. And so I was always flying back and forth frequently to, you know, go visit family. And, um, uh, so I ended up last year moving back to Boston, spend a year, living in Boston, being able to see family, it was great. Uh, but actually after starting this brand, um, we actually had to do a lot of our, in, uh, we had to do our own fulfillment. Uh, we have previously, we have always been able to um, use 3PLs, third party logistics centers to help us with all of our fulfillment. So we basically send them all of our inventory and then they're able to just um, take care and fulfill all of our orders. And we never have to worry about shipping anything, which is great. They charge us a flat fee, they take care of everything. It's a great deal. Um, for this in particular product and this in particular brand, which I will be sharing with you guys later on as well, um, we were not able to actually work with a 3PL, third party logistics center. So we actually have had to do all of our own fulfillment ourselves. And we've actually now had to bring fulfillment in-house. And now we have actually our own warehouse and actually fulfillment team that helps us fulfill all of our orders. Um, it's something that's brand new to us. And um, it's been a hell of an experience learning all about how to bring in operations and run a warehouse and run a fulfillment team and a supply chain, all these different things that we never were used to before. And so there's a lot that I wanna share with you guys as well, a lot of learning experiences and a lot of learning lessons. Um, oops, looks like the camera just cut off there. So fast forward now, because we've had to bring in our own um, fulfillment in-house and take care of all operations, all of ourselves, um, you know, we've had to make some you know, some pretty interesting decisions to figure out what the best way is to kind of run the business. And one of those things was actually moving down to Miami. So right now I am actually living in Miami. I have this uh, apartment here in a 22nd floor in this building. You can't really see too much now, but it does have a pretty, a pretty nice view. You can see like all the way out into the city. I'll have to uh, share with you guys another time 
on a different video, but um, nothing really going on in this place yet. I, all I have is literally my desk. I have a little small bookshelf there, a couch there. So I'm still moving in. I haven't really uh, spent much time like organizing the place. But um, yeah, moved down in Miami and now I'm living here now. I uh, absolutely love this place. Um, I'm a, I come from a, a Latin background. I'm obviously Hispanic and uh, Miami's like little Latin America, so I can relate. But um, yeah, live down here now. And uh, again, we moved all of our operations down here. So we have a warehouse here in Miami. And um, here's where we basically run our entire business out of. So uh, the last two months since we moved out, we moved down here actually two months ago. And um, for the last two months, I basically spent time here at the apartment working from home or at the warehouse, depending on what needs to be done. But um, yeah, wanted to update you guys on that too. Uh, again, I'll spend more time talking about the move and you know living here. I'll probably should give you guys a small tour later on as well. The last thing is, is that um, it's kind of crazy because as you guys know, we're going through this pandemic and like people are like super, uh, you know, there, there's always, there's mixed opinions about what's going on with the pandemic and like, is this virus actually real or not? I can actually vouch for it and say that it is real. I actually caught the virus. Um, the first time I came to visit here in Miami, I came down to, uh, we came down to look at places to stay, look at a few warehouses. And so um, on that same trip, I actually ended up catching the virus down here. When I got back, I, I had a mean headache and I, I wasn't feeling too well, super tired. And then the next day I got tested, I came out positive. Um, I, from my personal experience, I can say that for me, I would say I'm like somewhat healthy. You know, I try to eat clean, I work out. I did not have it or get as bad of symptoms compared to other people that I know got it. Um, I just had simple headaches. Um, I was super tired, I had a fever, a cough, runny nose. But besides that, to me, it wasn't any more than a cold and it lasted about five days or so. Um, so kind of crazy experience. Um, but yeah, I actually, I caught the, you know, caught the virus. After five or six days though, I was, I was good. This is actually back when I was in Boston. I quarantined myself at home. And um, you know, after that, uh, now I actually feel better than ever. Actually, I'm actually glad that I actually caught the virus because now I don't have to worry about going anywhere and potentially catching it and what the possibility or what the symptoms could be of, of catching it. I, I just, now I just walk around everywhere as if, you know, nothing's really going on and uh, it's, been, it's been great. So uh, yeah, I know that was a lot right there. Um, I have more that I wanna go over, but I, won't, I don't wanna make this video too, too long. Um, I really hope you guys got value out of the, this video of me sharing with you guys, you know, a really uh, sharing you guys one of a, a failed experiment uh, and a failed project, which is completely normal. And then also showing you guys what it looks like when you actually find a good product and you develop it into a brand and what the possibilities are, right? So um, yeah, I wanted to show you guys both ends of the spectrum, right? Um, and the reason I wanted to do that is because what I, based on my experience, um, I've had products that don't do well and projects that don't do well. And based on my experience, investing the time and efforts into that project and whatever cost was involved, all that and more you can get from actually finding one good product and actually building it into a brand. And you know, that was a good example right there of showing you guys what it looks like to go from having you know, a, a losing product or a losing project and then transitioning into a winning product and, uh, you know, building a brand around it. So yeah, I'm super excited to share more about, you know, what we're working on, the brand itself and just more updates overall. So if you guys like this video, I appreciate it. If you would drop a like on it, if you have any questions about anything that I went over, make sure you drop it down in the comments below. If you guys want to learn more about e-commerce and what we do here at the e-com incubator, there's going to be a link down below this video where you can check out more and you know basically watch a case study we put together that uh, show you, shows you guys more behind the scenes on you know what we do and um, if it sounds like something that you might be interested in you want to learn more then you can schedule our call with one of our coaches here and they can help you you know figure out what's the best way for you to get involved and you know work with us so that's pretty much it for this video i hope you guys all have a great rest of your day and i'll see you guys on the next video peace